Hi everyone, welcome back to our SQ Hill tutorial series. I am Hayo Tunde and today we are diving into intermediate SQL concept. This is part two of our series. So if you haven't watched the first video, make sure to check it out. The link is somewhere in the video or in the description below. In this video, we will explore advanced SQL functions, including regular expressions, if and case statements, subqueries, and joins. These techniques will help you handle complex data analysis tasks with his. Let's get started. First up, let's look at the regex function, which stands for regular expression. It's a powerful tool for advanced filtering. So get the sample code for that. You need to first make sure you're in the right database. We're going to be using the same database that is the university data that we use for the part one of this tutorial. So double click on that. Go to file to get a new query tab. Here is the sample query. This query selects all records from the university's table where the country starts with the letter U. This indicates the start of the string. So let's break this down. Select asterisk selects all columns from the table. From universities specifies the table to query and this filters records where the country starts with U. The semicolon indicates the end of the SQL command. So run the queries to see all countries starting with U. Here's the report we have. All the countries we have here are the ones with the first letter starting with U. Try modifying the query to explore other filters. For example, you can change the pattern to C to find countries starting with C. And there you have it. We have countries like Canada, China listed here. Next, we will use if and case statements to create new categories based on conditions. Here is an example query for that. This query categorizes universities as high or low based on their quality of education score. If the score is greater than 80, they are categorized as high, otherwise low. So let's break down this query. This selects the university name and quality of education columns. This creates a new column, education quality, that categorizes the quality of education as high or low. And from university specifies the table to query. And again, the semicolon indicates the end of the SKL command. You have to always put it there. So to run this particular query and not have this included, you would have to highlight the query you want to run. So with this highlighted, I'm going to run it to see the categorization. Here is what we have. We have a new column, education quality created, and the quality of education categorized as high and low, based on the marks. Try adjusting the threshold value or adding more conditions to the if statement. Here is an example with case statements. This case statement creates three categories, low, medium, and high, based on the quality of education score. I'll break this down. This selects the university name and the quality of education columns. This categorizes as high if the score is above 80. This categorizes as medium if the score is between 60 and 80. And this categorizes as low if the score is below 60. Again, this specifies the table to query and the semicolon indicates the end of the SQL command. So let's run this query to see the categorized data. We have an extra column created, the education quality, with the quality of education categorized as medium, low, and high. Subqueries allow you to use the result of one query as a part of another. Here is an example query. This query shows each university's name and quality of education score alongside the average quality score of all universities. The subquery calculates the average quality. So let's break down this code. This selects the university name and quality of education columns. And this is the subquery that calculates the average quality of education. From university specifies the table to query and semicolon ends the SQL command. So let's run this query to see the comparison. 
So we have a result showing quality of education column compared against the average quality of education. Try modifying the subquery to calculate different aggregate values like the total number of students. Finally, let's learn about joints, which allows you to combine data from multiple tables based on the related column. For this tutorial, we will be using the existing universities table and simulate a scenario where we have another table called rankings. Let's create a sample rankings table to illustrate joints. So, in your MySQL workbench, run this query to create and populate the rankings table. Great, we have just created a rankings table with the university's world rank and national rank. If you don't have this rankings table listed, Click on refresh to have it shown. Now, let's see how we can combine this new table with our existing universities table using joints. We will run our first join query to see how it works. This is an inner join. This inner join combines the universities and rankings table based on the university name, displaying the university's name, country, world rank, and national rank. How we break this down. This part tells SQL to retrieve four columns, university name and country from the university's table alias as U, and world rank and national rank from the rankings table alias as HAR. This specifies the university's table as the primary table and assigns it the alias U for simplicity. And the inner join clause joins the university's table with the rankings table based on the university name column. Only rows with matching university name in both tables will be included. And as usual, the semicolon indicates the end of the command. So run this query to see the merged data. You will notice that it displays the combined information from both tables where the university names match. Let's make this more engaging. Imagine your manager asks you to produce a report showing not only the universities and their countries, but also their world and national rankings. This inner join query is exactly what you need to create the comprehensive report. Now, let's explore a left join. This type of join returns all records from the left table, that is the university's table, and the matched records from the right table, which is the rankings table. If there's no match, the result is null from the right side. Here is a sample query for the left join. This left join returns all records from the university's table and the matched records from the rankings table. Any unmatched records from the rankings table will return null. So let's break this down. This part tells SQL to retrieve four columns, university name and country from the university's table, alias as U, and world rank and national rank from the rankings table, alias as HAR. The from clause specifies the university's table as the primary table and assigns it the alias U for simplicity. Finally, the left join clause joins the university's table with the rankings table based on the university name column. It includes all rows from the university's table and the matching rows from the rankings table. If there is no match, like I said, it returns null for the rankings column. And the semicolon indicates the end of the SQL command. So we're going to run this query to see the results. You can see that we have rows with null, where there's no match. For example, if a university is listed in the university's table, but not in the rankings table, the world rank and the national rank column will show null for that university. Let's also make this more engaging. Imagine you need to prepare a comprehensive list of all universities but some of them do not have rankings table available yet. By using the left join, you can ensure that you still get all the universities listed and you can easily spot which ones are missing ranking information because their rank columns will show null. So to summarize joins, here have the most common types of joins and their purposes. The inner join combines rows from both tables where there's a match in the specified columns. If there's no match, the role is excluded. Left join or the left outer join returns all rows from the left table and the matched rows from the right table. If there's no match, the result is null from the right side. Right join or the right outer join returns all rows from the right table and the matched rows from the left table. If there's no match, 
the result is null from the left side. And finally, we have the full join or the full halter join. It returns all rows when there is a match in either left or right table. If there is no match, the result is null from one side. Try experimenting with these different types of joins to see how they can help you combine and analyze data from multiple tables effectively. After running your SQL queries and getting the desired results, you can export the data to Excel for further analysis. So after running your queries, click on the export button in the results section of my SQL workbench. Choose CSV or Excel format and save the file. So with that, you can export your data to Excel or CSV for further analysis. In part one of this series, we covered how to link SQL queries with Power BI to create dynamic and interactive visualizations. If you missed that, make sure to check out the first video for a detailed walkthrough on integrating SQL with Power BI. And that's it for this intermediate SQL tutorial. We have covered regular expression, if and case statements, subqueries, and joins. These advanced techniques will help you perform complex data analysis efficiently. Don't forget to download the free practice file from the description below to follow along and practice your skills. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like button, subscribe for more tutorials and leave any questions or comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.